My name is Nyara Domoyo. I was born and bred in Blawayo. We moved to my Rondera, where I spent most of my childhood in, and then later in my childhood years, my family relocated to South Africa. Growing up, as far as I can remember, I've always wanted to be different. I didn't know what I wanted to be, but it wasn't the generic. I didn't want to be a doctor, I didn't want to be a lawyer, I didn't want to be an accountant, especially an accountant. It's sad for me now that accounts has to be one of the things I'm really good at, but I didn't want that. So because I wasn't exposed to different career options, the closest I knew was maybe I should be in construction because my dad was in construction so that's what I knew to be different. Outside of that either I was going to become a musician which my parents were not very keen on. However I wanted to do something that was different, something that was creative. I grew up as a in a Christian family. My mom was a very staunch Adventist woman. I can literally say that we were vegetarian when we were growing up primarily because also when we were growing up meat wasn't as accessible as it is now we ate meat on special days but my mom because of the religion then a vegetarian diet was the most recommended that's where I get the inspiration to lead a healthy lifestyle We are Yanaya. We are Dini's house. Nyari grew up in a Christian home. Actually, we are Adventists. Uh, uh, we stick to the Bible principle as Adventists. So she grew up in a home whereby uh, when we had our food, uh, it was uh, all plant-based food at home. So she grew up uh, eating those types of food and preparing those types of foods at, at home. So this is Nyari Liwai. When she was growing up in a Christian home, she actually attended all the classes of the Adventist school. Like uh, she attended the adventurer classes, she attended the, uh, the Pathfinder classes, she attended the uh, ambassador classes up until she got to the youth classes. So in those classes, like a, a, a church, she was uh, learning some of the principles of on how to cook food on a plant-based diet. Then also at home, we're also uh, applying that principle of eating what plant-based diet at home. So this is Nyari growing up. Yanaya is a plant-based bread. We're not 100% plant-based. We call it uh, our environment. The mothers love their meat, so we are here to give them their meat with lots of vegetables, treated differently. Uh, the digital lifestyle has helped us because at the genesis of the brand, the only source where we relied for marketing was online, and we managed that through various digital platforms, like your WhatsApp, your Facebook, Twitter, and I'm really grateful for Zimbabwe at large because through our platforms they welcome the bread beyond our expectations. We have grown tremendously in the last two years, primarily because of the various digital platforms that we have used to create brand awareness, positioning ourselves in the market, placing ourselves and letting our customers know about our offerings. A friend of mine, when we were about 18, was diagnosed of cancer. So his family had approached naturopathy guys. So they had put him on a vegetarian, plant-based diet. So when I went fully vegetarian and I was aware that I'm making a decision of becoming vegetarian, it was in support of my friend. It was to say, you can do it and we're going to do it together. You can conquer this. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. And post his life, I was now doing it in remembrance of him. My dad worked in construction and most of the work that he has done for 
all the time that I've known him. He's done contracts, subcontracts. So he didn't necessarily have a nine to five job. He determined how much work he was going to take, when he was going to work. But also it came with a lot of commitment from his end. So growing up, I'd always thought to myself, when I grow up, I, I don't want to have a nine to five job. I want to be able to determine how much money I'm making, when I'm working and how I'm working. And also primarily because of our religion, most jobs that people would get would require them to work on the Sabbath. So for me, it was to say, I can determine when I work, who I work for, and how I work. Because my major at university was photography, I was involved in a number of photography projects as groups, solo projects. So I have exhibited in quite a number of galleries across the world. I have exhibited locally here in Agare. I am a member of Zimbabwe Association of Female Photographers, also a member of Gwanza Photographers. I've exhibited in Cape Town, a number of galleries in Cape Town. I've exhibited in Germany, I've exhibited in Paris. I like money, you know? And I've liked money since I was a small girl. So since I was a young girl, I have always thought, how can I make an extra dollar? I attended camp meeting once when I was still younger and they did this presentation that said that you, you shouldn't live on one income and sh you should always be looking at how you can make a dollar a day, that was the lesson. So that's something that I've always carried at the back of my mind that at any point I should be making a dollar a day. So I have been involved in sewing. Because of my creative mind, I would apply my creative mind in sewing. I have done cleaning jobs whilst I was at uni. I have done lots of cooking. I have been a commercial photographer. I have worked as a designer. I have worked as a marketer. So I have tasted quite a variety of industries that I have been involved in. My decision to return back home was naive at the time, but I said that I wanted to come back home and make an impact. At the time, I thought that I was going to come and use my photography to make an impact. So she started doing uh, her work in South Africa, uh, doing some garment designing, uh, photography um, and the food industry um, but still she had still that in mind to say no I don't need to be based in South Africa she still had the mind that uh, she needs to come back home and start working in Zim. So 2015 she decided not to be in South Africa anymore so she moved to Zimbabwe, where she came and um, had some employment at Sidco. Uh, uh, yeah, that's where she started working. But while she was uh, working at Sidco, uh, still uh, she was formally employed, but she would do some jobs for herself outside the employment. That is, she started doing some. Uh, food processing like from a house uh, doing some small stuff and then delivering to individuals in the in, in houses door-to-door -door delivery of food out of the frustration of going out and not being able to find something I figured that was an opportunity that we could tap into because there were more people like me who were health conscious who were vegetarian also from our church, the Seventh-day Adventist, which is very strong on the health message, I knew quite a number of people that were vegetarians. The idea was that because we didn't have finance at the time, I was already dating my now husband. We didn't have 
the capital to be able to start a fully fledged business. So I was cooking at my flat. I would work with my friend who I would send flyers that I would have created from my graphic design background that would advertise, would advertise to our church friends that we knew and other people from our circles that we knew were vegetarians. So I would cook from my flat and deliver at people's offices. It was quite overwhelming when we started it because we realized that vegetarians out there didn't have options for them to choose from. This is how we ran the business so that we could leverage on the digital platforms. Every morning she could send me a menu of the food that she wanted to prepare, to prepare on that particular day. And I'll post on social media, that is uh, Instagram, that is WhatsApp, Facebook. Then people would then send in their orders. These are circles from church, from work, and our social circles. So they'll send in their orders, uh, location, then I'll send back to her. Then uh, she consolidates, then she runs with the orders during the day. End of day, again, digitally, we are then able to consolidate and uh, come out with the menus that we prepared, orders that we're able to deliver on the day, and then be able to prepare for tomorrow. Without capital, we had to be creative on ways of how we could reach out to our customers. And the digital world really helped to propel the agenda. At the time, it wasn't a brand, but the digital world allowed us to speak to our customers, which is up to this day our major playing field where we advertise to our customers, where we engage with our customers. So I would cook at home. My friend, whilst I was cooking during the day, would be the one sitting at work when she's not busy using digital platforms on our Facebook, uh, on our Facebook profiles, on Twitter and on Instagram and primarily on WhatsApp. This, she would use these digital platforms to send out the menu for the day people would select what they want to what they want to have for the day they would write back to her she would compile the orders communicate with me via whatsapp which is again uh, how the digital world capacitated the idea to bloom because it did not been for the digital platforms the communication between myself and my friend who was at work at the time and me at home and reaching out to the customers, getting the delivery addresses of where we needed to deliver the food and post that, getting feedback and preparing again for the next day. The plans then as a business in light of this shift into the digital world is to go fully e-commerce as a business that is consider e-menus, a mobile app, a faster way of, of integration, payment portals, paying on WhatsApp. In light of this digital shift in the world where your customers are behind the screen, we are looking at a variety of options that we can use as a business to ensure that we achieve the goals that we have, especially in the digital world. E-commerce has really helped us, especially during these COVID times, as our business is primarily a service industry where we, we are interfacing with people and service industry being the industry that has been mostly affected because of direct contact. So for the past, well, we can say two years, our business We've had to integrate it with e-commerce to ensure that we can continue with our sales. So on our website, we it allows us to our website allows our customers to order from wherever they are, and we deliver to where they are. Our platforms accept all forms of payment: Eco Cash, Zpeeds, debit cards, credit cards. So anyone from whichever part of the world can buy for their family. Currently, we can only deliver in Harare, but we are working on plans to extend the service so that we can deliver all across Zimbabwe. 
I met Nyari in 2016. Um, I'd come over to Harare as um, um, a, an assistant at a chief pastor at Mount Pleasant Seventh-day Adventist Church. Then I got an invitation to go and preach at Harare City Center Church. Um, and there she was. There was this girl with a big afro amongst many other beautiful women that existed in that church. So what caught my attention was just the, you know, the craziness of the afro. Um, and, 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 well, so I paid attention to that girl. And I was invited over for an all-night prayer uh, the same evening after I had preached. When I went to that all-night prayer and, you know, there is this girl, you know, she does this beautiful poem. Um, you know, she was, she was good at poetry. That's what I knew at that point, that she did this beautiful poem. You know, it was hanging very well, dropping all over from the Afro. And time came for introductions, and there she is. Then this girl that the pastor has eyed introduces herself and tells people that she's in arts, you know, she's into arts, you know. And you know how it is that we... Um, um, our, our definition of what arts are has always been myopic at, well, for one reason or the other or due to exposure. So I was a bit disappointed. But in any case, cut the long story short, um, she had already seen the pastor also. So she was interested in the pastor one way or the other uh, without even communicating it. Um, so she frequently visited Mount Pleasant Church where I was. Yet her church was a city center church. And um, through all that, you know, she invited me over for... For, for dinner, but I had this young man that had come to visit my house when I started staying in Harare and brought about a prayer request that, Pastor, I'm going to get married in April uh, with my um, uh, fiancé. And the only girl I would see this guy with was Nyari and, you know, no one else. So already my hopes at that point and moment were already crushed. You know, I thought to myself, this is never going to happen because this is the girl this guy has come to the pastor to ask the pastor to pray for. So when she invited me constantly for dinner to her place, I, you know, uh, uh, politely did not go. Found one way or the other a reason of not uh, presenting myself at the house for the, um, for the dinner because I knew if I would get there, I was going to end up making my intentions known too and I would disappoint my fellow uh, young men who had brought a prayer request. Fast forward just maybe two, three months down the line, one man, another pastor that I really uh, revered, one man that I really, you know, considered as a, a powerful, uh, uh, prayerful man, he had said to me at some point when we were at school, he had visited Harare and he says to me, young man, I saw a wife for you in Harare, you know, but I don't know how you guys are going to meet. I'm not going to give you any details of her. I'm not going to share anything about her. But when you see her, you're going to like her also. Um, so, one way or the other, if that happens, then you guys will see what to do. But if that doesn't happen, you don't get to see her, that's fine, which means she's not yours. So when he visited my place in Harare, she came to church on one particular Sabbath. And um, she invited her because they were friends. They had met before, I mean, some, some time back at some camp where he was a preacher or a speaker there. And when, he, when, when she invited her for supper or for dinner, at her place. He came to the house and invited me also to attend that dinner with him. And I told him, you know what, I, I'm interested in that girl who invited you, but she's getting married, so I can't attend the dinner. You know, he was very straightforward to say, you know what, that girl is not married. If you're seriously you're saying you're interested in this girl, then you need to go with me. I will prove to you that she is not getting married. So I narrated, no, this guy, there's a guy like this, ABC, and he says, no, it's not him. She doesn't have anyone. She's not dating anyone. So I went for the deal um, the first day. And I'm, I'm grateful to God for accepting to go for that deal. Um, and when, when we got there, the talk could reveal that indeed she wasn't seeing anyone. And I was really worried about that guy that was always in the picture. But anyway, she wasn't seeing anyone. So I really had to then recalculate and reboost that invitation, the personal invitation that was mine alone so that I can go and make my intentions known. So I sought that after and eventually got that um, invitation set up again. Well, in her narrations, the house was nice, it was clean, um, artistic in nature, very, 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 very clean. Well, 
<clears throat> what I then learned later in life is that she had actually washed the curtains and scrubbed the walls just before I came. But anyway, um, the house was very clean, very, very clean. And um, I, I, I liked her, sounded very intelligent from the time we spoke. And um, one thing she said to me was, uh, so if you are um, interested in me, what is your intention? What do you want to do with me? You know, that upfront. Um, by that time, I was also very ready then to, to settle down. You know, I'd had my disappointments in the past. So I was really, really willing to settle with one who would be deserving and willing to settle also in the nearest future. So she told me, I'm not a master's degree, neither am I an, an undergraduate um, degree. So neither is it four years, nor is it two years. If you're serious about this, you have to do it and find a way. So I told her, I'm going to marry you. So because our business is a perishable business, we are eternally grateful to eConnect that affords us an opportunity to be able to speak to our farmers at any point. The name Yana has uh, two uh, uh, meanings to it, you know. Um, so in our, in our discussions, um, for, for starters, number one, when we say Yanaya in Shona, we mean Yanaya, you know. Um, Kunaya, Kwemvura, you know, when, when it rains, uh, it brings about this freshness to the ground, you know. We begin to see the green grass, we begin to see the trees, you know, living up to whatever they are meant to be. So when we thought of Yanaya, the idea was to say, we must bring the freshness, we must bring the life, we must bring the life to the people. When Yanaya is seen, people must be able to live, people must be able to see life um, at the end of the day. And also, looking at that from one end, we then came also and said, you know what, um, whatever it is that is happening now, we believe this is an answered prayer from God. This is God working through all this and God also intending on inspiring and changing the lives of many people through whatsoever meals or the health message that is being sent out through the meals prepared at Yanai. So it's an answered prayer from God. God has answered. So when you say God has answered, that's Anaya in the Hebrew. So God has answered Anaya and we try and then trace the root of this name also from the you know Hebrew context. You know Hebrew names, they have uh, the roots, they have where they come from, they have you know the, the mother name or things like that. So that then came down to Yanaya. And to us, we're like, wow, this is beautiful. So Yanaya on the Hebrew end means God has answered. It is an answered prayer. And Yanaya from our Shona, it means Mvrayanaya, that breath of freshness. So when God answers the prayer, it brings about the life and the freshness. We have farmers that we work with. Our mantra as a business because our business is women owned. We also work with women farmers. So at the end of each cycle, we replenish our farmers with data. We primarily need them to be online all throughout our cycle so that we are speaking with them. Also, the digital world has allowed us for our drivers to be able to track where our drivers are for our deliveries, for our pickups, because we work with different farmers across Zimbabwe. We work with people from Wange, we work with people from the Eastern Highlands, we work with people from Region 2 where we get our oranges. So we work with people from uh, varied places. So the digital world allows us the ability because network is available in all of those places, allows us to be able to speak to them to transport our goods from where they are to where we are. So we are eternally grateful to eConnect, to the digital world, that they continue providing SMEs like us. My biggest fear as a chef is to get a report that a client is sick from the food of me. It is fear, actually. It is important for us yeah, to work in a clean, safe and healthy environment. For our motto is to inspire a healthy generation. You know, before I joined the team, I used to think vegetables are not nice. I enjoy making them, but I wasn't a fan. So, it's that.
the idea of having to blend one natural flavor and complement it with the next flavor to bring out the best as it is. It is important also for us as we get most of our supplies from different suppliers. As, we, as, as a growing business, we work with growing producers as well. As we grow, they grow. So as we get most of our produce from different parts of the country, we also make sure that how are they delivering the produce to us, how well are they handling the produce, so that we are going to cause contamination, different chemicals that are used as farmers producing their fruits with their vegetables. So we also have to complement that extra effort by making sure everything is clean, everything is up to stand. So uh, here as a team, our dream is to make sure that we are saving the best. We work as a team, it's not an individual effort, it's a collective effort. We do have more challenges here and here. Um, growing up, my sister was a caring person, a loving person, a protective person. Um, most of the time our parents um, were not in the country, they would be in the diaspora, South Africa, Botswana, Tanzania. Um, so our sister was the deputy parent in their absence. So she would take care of us prepare meals for us, make sure that we get to school looking clean and good, um, prepare our lunch boxes and would come back home. She would be the person helping us out with our homework and um, if we face any challenges at school, we would always know that it's um, safe for us to go to her and tell her. And she was a protective person as well in the community that we were staying in. Um, no one dared to bully us or take a chance of like trying to abuse us in any way because they knew our sister was a very well-known person in the community where we were staying that time. So we would always be regarded as in the community. That was like um, what people would say. So growing up, she was that type of a person, yes. We are looking at creating a full value system, value chain of our technology from how our customers are ordering from us with Corona. We're looking at contactless menus, digital currency, how can we ensure with the current problems of change in the economy, how can we maneuver that using the digital world to the customer receiving their food, the feedback, how we interface with our suppliers. So we are looking at a, a 360 degree e-commerce solution using the digital world, looking at mobile applications, our website, how can we integrate it better, a variety of payment options, our payment portal, how to integrate it so that we are fully digital. EcoNet Wireless, inspired to change your world.